Welcome to Fridays with Coco. It's a very special day. It's not just Friday. It's February 2nd. And I think we're going to learn something about why it's a special day through the ecumenical prayer cycle. We pray for people in different countries every week to cover all of God's children in one year. And this week we will pray for people who live in Andorra, Italy, Malta, Portugal, San Marino, Spain, and Vatican City, right around this part of Coco's beach ball globe. Well, let's begin, let's begin here. Something looks a bit shadowy. Maybe that's what makes today special. A reading of Philippians chapter four, verses eight through 13. Whatever is true and honorable and just and pure and pleasing and commendable, if there is any excellence or anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in God greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me before, but had no opportunity to show it. Now that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have, I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. I can do all things through the one who strengthens me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You heard it here. We have heard and we will tell the story of course, Coco has written a poem, and maybe, just maybe, this picture gives you another hint about this special day, which seems to be February 2nd. The title of Coco's poem is Consolation. The morning dawns with the rising sun, letting us know that a new day has begun. As I look to the east, I already know there's a shadow behind me that's long and low. When the clock's hands point up, my shadow is below, and there's warmth from the sun with its bright, bright glow. As the day lengthens, I look eastward once more. My shadow is now in front of me, regardless of what for. Must this looming darkness always follow me? Will it chase me forever and not let me be? Then I realize I become aware. I was the one who put it there. I admit that I am still a little green in knowledge of some of the things I have seen. But if light creates a shadow, then good it must be. And to continue learning, I can now be free. So if you and I should stand together, our shadows will merge in all kinds of weather. We'll help each other through difficult days and know that love heals us in all sorts of ways. By the way, when is Groundhog Day. Now, if that's not a clue, I don't know what else can be said about this, but apparently this is something very important. And we have a groundhog around here somewhere. I'm just not exactly sure where at the moment. Today is the fifth in a series of five videos about pancakes, a food that is loved in one form or another all over the world. Somehow, Coco has scripted these videos to connect scripture, poetry, and the Vermont autumn travels the mice took with me in tow to five different locations. And today we are featuring Dog Mountain, 
in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Each of Coco's guests will say something about pancake animals, share a dog story, and personal thoughts about today's scripture. Let's go to the BTW basket of pancake animals to learn more about people, places, creatures, and of course, pancakes. I always try to remember to hold these up so you can see them a little better because some pictures are, are amazingly cool, but a little hard to see from a distance. Go ahead. By the way, number one, my name is Stephen and I'm from Windsor, Vermont. I love pancakes, which might be why Coco invited me to come today. A few years ago, I was at Walt Disney World's Frontier Land Bell Terrace Restaurant and was having brunch. And as you might imagine, the pancakes were shaped like Mickey Mouse. As someone who loves to experiment in the kitchen, I went back home and started getting creative. When all is said and done, I think making rabbit pancakes is my favorite, though not the easiest. I really like the Bible reading Coco chose for today, with its message of thinking about how we sometimes have plenty and sometimes have to make do with very little. Rev. David mentioned that he visited Dog Mountain in St. Johnsbury, Vermont this past fall. I live less than an hour away and have visited Dog Mountain many times, mainly because my dog loves to go and meet other dogs, and there are always many dogs there. I've already made plans to attend the summer dog party on June 22nd, when almost a thousand dogs will enjoy the 150 plus acres of land to run, sniff each other, as we all know, and explore. It's funny to think how happy my dog is while being with so many furry friends and yet so completely happy to be with just me. St. Paul tells us to be satisfied with those times of plenty or little. Dogs can do it. Maybe we can learn something from them. I learn a lot from the critters around here, and it all began with you know who. Okay, this one, this one has chocolate chips, a chocolate chip necklace. That's, we might just try our hand at making one of those for, for me to wear, not for the pancakes. <clears throat> okay, by the way, number two, my name is Mary Lou from Springfield, Vermont, which is also relatively short distance from Dog Mountain. And because of the Connecticut River, I could actually get there by boat. I learned from Rev. David that we have something in common. We both loved monkeys at a very early age, and we both love being playful in the kitchen. So I think you might be able to guess, I like to make monkey pancakes, served with bananas, of course. With all of this talk about pancakes, I think it might be easy to hear St. Paul talk about having plenty or being hungry as something literally about being fed by food. My sense he's talking about something much broader because he states clearly that it is in the context of any and all circumstances. He goes on to say that when we follow in the ways Jesus taught us, we get to a place where plenty or hunger are not the focal points. It's more about contentment. St. Paul often used words like contentment to describe life with a kind of peace he believed came directly from God and is available to all of us. 
the founder of Dog Mountain, Stephen Hunek, found contentment in dogs and dedicated his life to creating not just a place for humans to go with their dogs, but applied his incredible skills as a woodworker to make all kinds of sculptures. Even the ends of the pews in the dog chapel are wooden dogs that are sitting at attention. And I can tell you, it's pretty amazing. Maybe sometime we should just have a little slideshow with all of these things that the mice and Coco lead me to become involved with. Okay, this one, can you take a guess at that? Which looks relatively simple to make. So maybe we'll get some instructions. By the way, number three, my name is Marsha from Bennington, Vermont, which is a long way from Dog Mountain, a place I heard about a few years ago and had to visit. Now it's an annual trek. I have several pets and love them all. Even, and may I dare say, especially my fish. So pancakes, fish pancakes. All it takes is a few slices of strawberry and a grape cut in half. My kids love them and so do I. Okay, scripture. And speaking of plenty and hunger, the Philippians passage began with a long or plenty list of things. Whatever is true and honorable and just and pure and pleasing and commendable. These are all big and bulky things that take much work to achieve. But instead of weighing us down, these are things that build us up. And once you get started, it's amazing how it just keeps going and has a certain contagion. And how do I know these things are contagious? Because I learned about these things from others, which means I'm just one small link in a very long, ongoing garland of goodness. There's enough bad stuff on the news these days. Things I do need to know about, but St. Paul was one who always put the gospel first. The same gospel we refer to as the good news. Huh? You heard it here, and I'm sure you can hear the good news anywhere, and you can hear it from your own voice every time you read the Bible. And here we are at that place called how can we be that, by the way, number four already, and yet we are and almost knocked over the stack of pancakes. By the way, number four, my name is Mark from the little town of East Burke, Vermont, way up near the Canadian border. Statistics show that in my part of Vermont, there is an average of one bear for every three square miles. Sometimes I think eating bear pancakes might create some kind of a repellent from them, but I guess I know that's not really true. I met Rev David and the mice last fall in a restaurant in Vermont. I just had to ask what the mice thing was all about, and before I knew it, we were talking about Dog Mountain, a place I loved to visit, and I knew the mice would want to go there too. When I hear the Philippians reading, the word that comes to my mind is sufficient, a word that means there is enough to achieve a goal. It's completely different from stockpiling or taking too much of something at the expense of someone else. Jesus taught us that God's love is not only sufficient, but there's enough of that sufficiency for everyone. But there's one little thing we have to remember. God needs us to be the ones to do a lot of the love work. Wherever God places us, 
with whomever God places in front of us. And I suppose if the sun were there, there might be, well, I don't know, all this shadow talk has me a little distracted today for some reason. This one is one of the most detailed pancakes I've seen in a long time. Although I think I saw a gorilla one somewhere, not in this kitchen at least yet. By the way, number five, my name is Leo from St. Johnsbury, Vermont, which means I can go to Dog Mountain just about any time I want, and I do. The most inspiring part of it for me is Dog Chapel, a place where all of the walls are covered with pictures of and personal messages about pets that have gone beyond to their earthly life, whatever that is. What a joy it's been to watch Dog Mountain develop and grow and see how more and more people are learning about it. And when it comes to the things I learn in the Bible, I love to be around any time someone is growing in their faith, and I can be a little part of it, along with important drivers who honk their horns or an occasional nudge from someone trying to push me along in a grocery line. I think of how St. Paul was always trying to find ways to convince us about a certain kind of joy, a God joy, a form of delight that changes our sulking through the inevitable to something that embraces life with a positive attitude. Sometimes I think God gave me a dog to take care of just so I would see that life is most complicated because of how I complicate it. Dogs, not so much, or maybe even not at all. And guess what kind of pancakes I like to make. Well, now we know. And thank you one and all for coming. It seems like there have been like many weeks where I come home from choir rehearsal on a Thursday night and I smell the pancakes. But usually it's so late, everyone's gone to bed. And you know what? They leave a few for me. I'm not allowed to touch this one because they're still adding to see how far along they can go with it. Coco Tadas in her poem about shadows, particularly the kind we see when the sun is behind us. Our lives also have the shadow of the cross, something we can see when we believe Jesus as the light of the world is behind us. Shadows also have a connection with dogs. If you've ever had one, and I've only had one, you know most of them love being right where you are all the time even when tending to personal needs in the bathroom. Although the one I had many years ago was not happy about taking a shower, so she would run in the other direction at the sight of her towel. It is our family and the friends we choose who shadow or follow our lives, ready to let light bring us together for mutual support. And Jesus, our greatest friend of all. When I was growing up in that land of green mountains and many cows that I think most of you just call Vermont, my mom went to the market every Saturday morning with a $10 bill to cover the cost of groceries for the upcoming week. I knew she tried to keep a running mental tally of what she was spending, but there were times when it did end up being over $10. She had learned how to put the food on the belt in such a way that if something had to be put back, it would always be at the end and the important stuff came first. Sounds like St. Paul, doesn't it? 
And there were many times when this did happen. She stuck to that budget of $10 and what a great job she did. So once that tally had reached the $10 and the items had been returned to the shelves, we just realized that would be all that we would have to eat that week. There was one week, the first time I was going to play the organ in church back in 1967. And it was decided by my parents that I would wear a two-piece suit instead of my white shirt and Sunday pants. We found one at Montgomery Wards for $8. This left $2 for groceries or the supplies for pancakes, which we would eat all week for supper, two nights with bacon. To this day, pancakes represent for me a willingness to give something up in order to have something else. And in the case of pancakes and my $8 suit, the whole family went with less just to benefit me. God has created us to be people who learn how to survive. And if we're willing to sometimes go with less or without, there's a blessing that fills the gap. We're about to go into the season of Lent, a time when we might opt to give up something in order to find out how God will fill the gap, tangible or otherwise. By the way, number six, life in Vermont could be pretty stark. After all, winter usually lasted far into July. The pancakes that were eaten day after day by necessity were pretty much the same. But if I were to do such a thing now, I can imagine having puppy pancakes one day, monkey pancakes the next day, just to put a little fun into the necessity. And Dog Mountain in St. Johnsbury, a reminder of those faithful creatures who happily greet us with barks and licks and jumps and don't complain about having the same thing for supper every night. They're just happy to have something to eat while being with us. And by the way, number six and a half, AP Groundhog Day to you. We could sing it, but you wouldn't want to hear my voice. For this video series, we've been sharing the music of a Finnish composer named Valdemar Henriques, spelled H-E-N-R-I-Q-U-E-S. Someday I'll probably learn how to actually pronounce that. And this one is called Mozart, who is inspired by the style of Mozart, and it's pretty playful. So I'm gonna let you have, because this is the last video on the pancakes, um, but I will let you know, now that we've kind of made it this far, I think the mice will just keep putting more and more and they won't care when it topples over. And oh, there's the beautiful groundhog and of course Coco's pancake mix box and all that stuff sitting there. And it looks slow. There is a groundhog on top of the keyboard. And wouldn't you know it, just when I want to play something that's a little on the fast side, who appears? On the bench to help me, Speedy the Sloth. I'll give you a little, little bit of information. I usually give Speedy a note or two to play because Speedy has such dexterous and wonderful whatever these are. The only thing is, if I say I need this note, I might not hear it until tonight. But who cares what time? Oh, and the bison is giving our groundhog, whose name is Shadow, quite a look. All right, I think you should just stare at, stare at the people while we do this. Here we go.
apparently the note is coming later. Just so you hear it, it's this one. Fold your things. Feet too. I'm so lucky to have all of that. Close your eyes. Let us pray. God of beyond sufficient love, thank you for Jesus, the true light and the true vine who connects us all, those we know and those we have not met. Thank you for how the words of St. Paul to the Philippians calm us down when we begin to worry about hunger or not having plenty because your love is so much bigger as we show reverence for life and pray for all of your children and creatures. We give thanks that all of us are sisters and brothers, friends, as Jesus calls us friends. And we especially lift up those who live in Andorra, Italy, Malta, Portugal, San Marino, Spain, and Vatican City, who you know each by name. We lift up all with any health issues, all who are caregivers and all who are transitioning from this life to the next, either alone or with loved ones. Thank you for giving us Jesus by whose living, dying, and rising to new life assures us that we too are promised that new life. As faith-filled people, keep us filled with your holy gifts of hope, peace, love, and joy. God, for all that has been, we say thanks. For all that will be, we say yes. And we say thanks, and yes, in the name of the one who gave himself completely for us, Jesus. Amen. And may God bless you today. Amen.